Guys, we've got some good news and some bad news. The good news is there is no good news. And the bad news is they've decided to move the national championship game. The only problem is it's still on a Monday. We're going to get into all of this ESPN PR department coming out with a tweet yesterday saying we've got a programming update. Monday, January 9th, the college football playoff national championship game will now kick off at 7.30 Eastern Time. I believe originally every year they've been kicking it off at 9 o'clock. They're moving it up. Uh, the reason they, are, they had been kicking it off at 9 is to try and make it accessible for, for both the East and the West Coast because it's 9 o'clock Eastern, 6 Pacific. But I guess they really don't care about the West Coast or they figure, you know, 4.30 Pacific time, people should be home from work at that point. Guys, college football was meant to play on a Saturday. And they very easily could have moved, like it should be, the national championship to Saturday night. And then people say, well, there's a scheduling conflict because the NFL has their playoff games at, four and eight on Saturday in early January. And I would say there's an extremely easy solution. Why not just move the NFL playoff games up to one and four fifteen and then have the college football national championship on at eight fifteen or eight thirty on Saturday night. Every weekend all the major college football games are played on Saturday night day night. The conference championship games are played on Saturdays. Why do, do we change for the national championship and make it a Monday? It makes no sense. College football, the overall vibe, it's a Saturday type sport. You want to watch it. You're feeling great. You still got Sunday off. That's what's so great about college football compared to the NFL. You know, with the NFL Sunday, everyone goes to work on Monday with college football Saturday, you already know, you also have Sunday off. We Somehow this needs to be changed. You would hope that they would be able to at some point do that. I guess this is a step in the right direction, of course. I, I, I mean, think about it. You like The ratings you get for the national championship have to be bigger than the ratings for an NFL playoff game. I know the Super Bowl is going to be way bigger, but we're talking about an NFL playoff game versus the College Football National Championship. Let's move the NFL playoff games up to 1-4-30. and And then even if there's another game, why not just make one of the games on Friday? So if there's three NFL games on Saturday beginning at 1-4-8, and eight, move one of them to Friday night. It'll probably get even better views because it's Friday night primetime. And then you still have two, you know, the 1 o'clock game, the 4-15 game, and then the national championship happening at 8-30. That's what we should do. The Monday night national championship, they had, they definitely had to change off of starting it at 9 o'clock on Monday night with no holiday on Tuesday. So people have to go to work. You're starting the game, you know, at 9 o'clock. It's not ending till 12-30. It is a horrible system, and then people have to get up and go to work Tuesday, and it's the start of their week. People are already not happy. So they knew, even though the West Coast, maybe it's not ideal, definitely starting at 6 o'clock you know, Pacific time versus 4.30, 6 o'clock would be better. They're willing to make that sacrifice because they think West Coast people will still watch it while also making it more accessible for the East Coast people it's going to end hopefully by around 11 o'clock with all the festivities and things like that. So the national championship game is beginning at 7.30, which is a small step in the right direction, but we still would love to get it you know, on Saturday night. And then they say, oh, there's a scheduling conflict because of the NFL. Really, that can all be resolved very easily. I just explained how you could resolve it. Guys... I don't know the ratings exactly, but the national championship has to get better ratings, you would hope, than an NFL playoff game. It, you know, I don't know if that's the wild card. I'm guessing that has to be the wild card weekend. So maybe there are three games on Saturday. 
Why not just move one of the games to a Friday? It'd be great. You put it on Friday at 8 o'clock. And then you have two games and then the national championship at night. This is all obvious, but they don't do it because they're so obsessed. They want that 8 o'clock window for the NFL. And they're, they're contracted to have that. And then, guys, we've got a major change upcoming for the Saturday night game, primetime game on ESPN, Miami, Texas A&M. Max Johnson, the transfer from LSU, will be the starting quarterback for Texas A&M. We understand Texas A&M has struggled greatly on offense. The loss to Appalachian State, I certainly agree with this move, guys. At this point... I think Texas A&M came into the season with unrealistic expectations from the general public because of the recruiting class that they signed. They signed the greatest recruiting class in history, but you have to understand, these kids are all true freshmen. They're all too young to make really a major impact. So from the beginning, I had thought the best case scenario for Texas A&M was a New Year's Six game. All these people picking Texas A&M to make the playoff simply did not understand how their roster was constructed. All of their talent is true freshmen, you know, so them starting Max Johnson, I think they're desperate. They're trying to find something. My projection on Texas A&M, I think they're going to go big in the transfer portal. Their boosters are going to pay multiple millions of dollars to try and pry an elite quarterback from another school. And then I think AM is really going to look at getting, trying to get an elite offensive coordinator to install a new offense for AM and for Jimbo Fisher because there's a lot of criticism right now with Jimbo Fisher and that overall offensive scheme. When it comes to this Texas AM Miami game, I think it's a lower scoring game. Uh, that's going to be very close. Miami, to me, the reason I didn't pick them in my uh, uh, weekly picks is because I'm concerned about the lack of playmakers on the outside, and it is a road game in Texas A&M. Maybe with Max Johnson, it's a shot in the arm. I still think Texas A&M this year is is a f- generally flawed team because they have the issues at quarterback, and Max Johnson, the transfer from LSU, he's nothing special. But you'd think he'd at least outperform what Texas A&M had been getting. So overall, I'd say this is the right move for Texas A&M. You got to try something new. You're scoring 14 points against Appalachian State. Let's be real. Uh, and Texas A&M has a major, major game against Miami. Should be a fun game. But again, guys, I would caution people: it's going to be lower scoring, lower scoring uh, in that one. So this is a report that just came out today. Texas spending over half a million dollars for their football recruiting weekends in June, including a visit by Arch Manning. Uh, So they are running up the tab, trying to impress those. Of course, Texas. Guys, I feel bad for Texas. If you guys don't know the situation right now with Texas, they face Alabama. They should have beat Alabama even with their backup quarterback who was also injured. Now Quinn Ewers is out. Hudson Card is questionable at best. And they face a pretty good UTSA team. Just unfortunate. I think they're around 11-point favorites. But if there was one team that deserved to face an FCS team this year, it's Texas. Coming off a heartbreaking loss to Alabama, you lose your starting star young quarterback, Quinn Ewers. Your backup is injured. And you've got to face a pretty solid team, UTSA. Uh, you know, I'm sure when Texas scheduled UTSA, they didn't expect them to be this good. But it would certainly help for Texas if they got to face an FCS team this week with all of their injuries. And then we've got this Heisman watch. C.J. Stroud, Caleb Williams, Bryce Young, and Stenson Bennett. So guys, when it comes to the Heisman race, I don't even think it's started. I don't even think the Heisman race has started. We're basically seeing C.J. Stroud without JSN kind of go through the motions. Caleb Williams, I will say, has been very efficient. He's putting up really good stats, really boosting his overall quarterback rating. Uh, But I don't think Caleb Williams is winning the Heisman. My thought process with Caleb Williams... 
He's going to be back next year as a junior, and I think he will be the preseason Heisman favorite next year. But I don't think he's winning it this year. Bryce Young, I just I think the weapons that are around him are too weak for him because he was already it was already a kind of an uphill battle for him. There's only been one two-time Heisman winner. He didn't even come into the season as the favorite because people know how, how hard it is to win back-to-back -back Heismans. And now he has to deal with a wide receiver core that looks a little underwhelming. My dark horse is still Will Anderson. I don't know what Will Anderson's stats look like. I think he has at least a few sacks, um, but he would still be my dark horse. Although I'm not sure there's going to be many games for Will Anderson to have a Heisman statement. I don't know if it'll matter, but you know maybe the Texas A&M game. I don't know who else Alabama faces off the top of my head, but there's that. And then guys, last night we had the uh, ratings disaster that was the NFL game that was exclusively on Amazon Prime. And guys, let me just say, Amazon did a great job with the overall production value. Kirk Herbstreet, Al Michaels, the graphics, it all looked great. I have nothing against streaming services. Let me make that clear. My issue is making it exclusive. If you want to have the option to pay less money to not get cable and pay $20 a month and watch Thursday Night Football, you should be able to do that. But you can't exclusively make it on streaming. You can't do that because the only way we can watch it is by streaming it. So like I have no problem paying $15. I'll pay more. That You know, I have cable, right? So people will pay more. It's not about money. It's not about paying the $15. I've got Amazon Prime. That's fine. The issue is when you make something exclusively on a streaming platform and it happens to be live, it is a very bad product. I understand it's cheaper. I understand people like it. People use it. That's great. You should still be able to use it. My issue is when you make it exclusive streaming. So the only way you can watch it is by streaming it. That's the problem. That's the issue. And we know why it's exclusive because Amazon shields out a billion dollars a year to get the rights to Thursday Night Football. And why is Amazon making that investment? Because they know in turn, they're going to get you know so many new Amazon Prime members. It will overall throughout the lifetime of their contract, because this is a contract through 2033, it will help them grow. And, it's, and people are saying already, th this is going to be a great deal for Amazon. Even paying a billion dollars per year, I think the total is like $13 billion. They shilled out to get the rights to Thursday Night Football games through the year 2033. Guys, it's never about, oh, you have to pay $15. That's fine. You know, it, it, $15 for a month, that's that's a fine deal. It, it's not about the money. The issue is making, it ex making live sports exclusive for streaming. There should always be the cable option. There should be a streaming option. If you want to pay less money, you can get the stream. You cannot make it exclusive on stream that is my opinion but guys that is going to do it for this video make sure you're following me on twitter link to that's always in the description i'm of course the depressed ginger thank you for watching